like to see your beautiful faces. If you could come forward, this will be a Kodak moment. So if all the moms can come up. If you don't know if you're a mom, let me know. I'll help you. <clears throat> there you go. Look at all these beautiful moms. Now, do we have a mic, Mark, that we could give to the moms? Oh, look at them. <laughs> Sing or pray or... No, this will be simple. <clears throat> First of all, for the kids, I know that some of them are here. And the husbands, this is your time to boast about your mom or your wife. What can you say about your wife or your mom? And if your mom's not here, feel free to share something uh, if you want. That's okay too. Maybe your mom uh, is no longer here, but you'd like to share something special about her. Being that it's Mother's Day, you can certainly say something. But for those who are in front right now, some of the kids are here, and I'd like you to say something nice about your moms. <laughs> nice. And then if there are no kids, the husband can say something on behalf of the kids. And the mic is here if you'd like to say something because this is a special moment i'm i'm even i've trimmed my message down so that we can honor the women today so please be nice to them and say something nice about them okay oh okay go ahead closer you could take your mask down Out in the world. Yeah. Wow. Deacon Josiah. Um, first of all, I want to say happy birthday to all the moms up here. And, uh, yeah. and mom, I love you very much. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for taking care of me when I was a little boy. And uh, I just want to say I, I love you. And I love you too, Mother. Thank you for uh, teaching me about the Word of God when I was uh, pretty young. Thank you for taking care of me. And, <laughs> and I just want to say to both of you, I Yeah, go ahead. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Ray Ray? There's a microphone.
Nice. Oh yeah, go ahead. Get the time. Okay, would anyone like to say something? Josh, did you want to say something? I'm not forcing you.
Mick? Would you like to say something to any of these mothers here? The COH mothers? Want to say anything, Mick? Okay, here. Well, happy Mother's Day to everyone. Never ceases to praise God by our mother. Raise your hand, Mother. She reminds me every day that I am a younger person because she calls me just about every week and tells me, or wakes me up actually from my sleep. <laughs> and just tells me that she loves me. That's all she does. Wow. She just reminds me and calls me every week to tell me that she loves me. And Mom, I love you. Thank you and happy Mother's Day. Mother, Now I'm going to turn it over to the mothers. And basically, what would you like to say to your family? What would, what would you say, for example, if you're thinking of your family, how do you pray for them? What would you want them to know? When you're by yourself in solitude, how do you pray for your family? Huh? I pray that they get to know the Lord there each day through their Bible study and through reading His Word. And the Lord will send a blessing, and I think they'll agree with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, God. Can you tell me I could pass the mic? I didn't get my chance to uh, express my love for my mom. Okay, go ahead. She uh, has made a lot of sacrifices for our children, and even though she doesn't call me like she does Mitch, <laughs> I still love her. <laughs> <laughs> well, each morning I, when I drive to work, I have a, a full hour to uh, think about of all the blessings. But um, the first thing I say is that um, is that when I leave for work is um, to keep them safe always and um, put his shield upon them so that and no harm will be on them. And of course, I always give them kisses right before I leave. I just want to make sure I feel okay for people. I go away, and um, 
I always pray for the whole entire family, also for my siblings and for my mom who's not here. Um, happy Mother's Day. Uh, I know you don't hear us but, uh, right now, but you mean so much to us, to each of us, and we love you very much. And to my eight siblings, of course, Corey, Laura, Ate Mimi, Ate Carol, Ate Christy, Ate Brenda, I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. You're being called on that. You could do it, Don. Anybody else would like to say something about their mom or Okay, Nestor? Best wife, huh? Yes. How many do you have? Who's <laughs> <coughs> the best? <clears throat> Anybody else? Glenn? Okay. Uh, happy Mother's Day.
Any of the moms would like to say something, Corrine? <laughs> Go down the line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Verizon. Uh, I do. <laughs> Happy you. Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Um, I wanted to let my family know that I pray for my husband and my son every morning. And actually, on the day I come out work, I pray for Josiah that um, he will just continue to follow his heart and believe in yourself. Thank God I was blessed with the, I am, I am blessed with the five children. They are all happy. They are all okay. Yes, they, they have their own family. Uh, and I also, I, I'm so grateful that uh, they are all uh, grown up and have kids of their own. Um, I thank God for giving me the best family, the best husband, the best children, and the best grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And I pray to God that he keeps all of us safe and healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, greatest by faithfulness, I pray for moms. Uh, moms, I pray that the tears and the spirits are actually prayers to the Lord because we have brought them this day. It is so many words, but I pray that actually, even though it is word that I'm a perfect Sunday morning mom, I still care for you, love you, and my heart always goes out to you. Thank you very much for being part of my story. I love you too. Mm -hmm. My prayer for my family is that you will always remember Being a mom is not easy, but it's very rewarding, and it's one of the best things. Um, I want my family to know that they're my biggest fear, the best things in my life, and they're also what I'm most proud of. being here in Church of Hope is that worrying about them isn't doing any good. Is that giving them up to God is the best thing I can do. And that's what I do for my family. It's trusting that God will be there when I can. That God 
will hear them when I can't. And that I need them when I'm not there. And I want them to know that I love you. Happy Yasmin. I will see you next week. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. All right. On the last one, I'm going to keep it short. So, um, Bernie said, What do you think about when you think about your family? For me, my family gives me strength. They make me want to be strong. They make me, and that's what I pray for. I pray for them constantly, and I pray to God that I will always have the strength to give them every bit of me to the end. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Did I miss anybody? Is there anyone down here, Beta? No? Anybody else out here? Women, I want you to know that we all love you here at the church, and you are all very dear to me. And I can go on and say things about each and every one of you, but then we, I won't have a message. So instead, I will summarize it by giving you a, a brief message this afternoon. So I'll keep it short so that you can enjoy the rest of your day. Happy Mother's Day. But mom, happy Mother's Day, especially to you. You're the reason why I turned out the way that I turned out, part of the reason. And dad's the other part of the reason. Huh? God had the other part too. And I wanted to say happy Mother's Day to my wife, who is not trying to be strong, she is strong. So she leaves a good example to the kids and I pray and support her all the way because our task is to raise our kids in the admonition of the Lord and so we don't just say that because we're up here but we literally do it because we know it's right and sometimes that causes for clashing in the home with the kids but we still have to do what's right before the Lord so Happy Mother's Day to all of you, and I hope and trust that this will be a memorable day for all of you. And for now, if you can take your seats, I'd like to share something that we all are familiar with from Luke chapter 10. And I thought this would be apropos as far as reminding you all as mothers what to do. You are all very much loved. And later on, we'll sing a happy birthday for May. May's birthday, I believe. Right, May? She turned 29. 29 or 28, one of those. So, let me, Jasmine, was my, uh, okay, there you go. This is taken from Luke chapter 10, and although this is targeting the moms, this will apply to everyone, <clears throat> all believers. It happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, so you got Martha and Mary, the key subjects who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with what? What does this say? Much serving. So think of serving Jesus. 21st century, that would be in church, serving Jesus. Today, or back then, she was serving Jesus. She was distracted with much serving. And one thing that I see and notice when you listen to this passage taught online is that you, you'll rarely hear that Martha was alone serving, getting the adobo and the sandwiches and the punset ready for who? Many have you, many would lead you to believe it's only Jesus. But 12 disciples were with Jesus. So you've got 13 people that Martha was distracted with trying to serve them. And she approached Jesus, him, and said, Lord, 
Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. So in the aggravation, in the heat of the moment, because she's so upset with the much serving, notice what she concludes. Lord, don't you care? Have you ever had moments like that where you're so bogged down with life that you pause for a moment and your prayers are like, Lord, where are you? Don't you care about me? Look at, all, look at what I'm doing for my family. Look at what I'm doing for the church. She was distracted with much serving and she concludes that Jesus no longer cares for her. Have you ever felt like that? Had those moments where you're like by yourself saying, Lord, don't you care? Look at me. I'm working so hard. I'm making all these sacrifices for my family, my husband. No one's there for me. They don't even appreciate me. Lord, don't you care? I thought you're omniscient and you know it all. Tell her to help me. So now she demands and commands the Son of God to tell her, tell him, tell my sister to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, here's what's really going on. You are worried and troubled about what? Many things. The reason why you're overwhelmed and now you're firing off at your own sibling is really because you're worried and troubled about many things. That's, inter that's interfering with your relationship between you and your sister. You're mad at her because all really you're worried <clears throat> and troubled about the bills, about fixing this, about fixing that. You've got all this worry on your plate. And he doesn't say that it's wrong. He's just saying, look, the reason why you're telling me to tell your sister to help is really because you're worried and troubled about many things. That's the root cause. That's the reason why you're firing off and telling me what to do. You want me to tell your sister to help you fix the sandwiches, right? But the truth is, you've got a lot on your plate. You're worried and troubled about the whole world. You're worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. Needed. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. What is that good part? Here's the two. Mary was seeing and looking at Jesus. Listening to Jesus at his feet. Martha was serving Jesus and serving Jesus. So the difference between the two is Mary is focused at Jesus Christ, listening to his word by his feet. Whereas Martha was so caught up with the serving and the busyness, not that that was wrong, but that's what was part of the culprit for her getting her upset at her, her own sister. Worried and troubled about many things, but Mary has chosen that good part. What is the good part? Just listening to Jesus. Listening to what he has to say, because then and only then will she be able to prioritize. She'll be able to recognize, okay, some of this I need to take and bring this before God. Maybe I need to lift this up in prayer. Maybe it's something I can't fix. Maybe I need to really in, in, invoke the involvement of God. Father, help me with my home. This is what's going on in my relationship at home, with my kids, with my spouse, with my in-laws, with my relatives. I am troubled and bogged down with a number of things, and I, I do realize that I get short really easily. 
But Mary was focused on Christ. And Jesus equates that to the good part which will not be taken away from her. So Mary was listening to Christ. Martha was serving Christ. Martha was busy serving. So, moms, never forget that good part. So we heard your story. We heard what you shared. We know that you're very busy. We know that you pray for your family. We know that you have a lot of things on your mind. We know that you're a hard worker and we can't live without you. Jesus said, God said in Genesis, I need to send you a helpmate, create a helpmate. Took out one of our ribs so that he could form woman. We can't do it on our own. Just like Glenn said, he couldn't have done it. I couldn't have done it. I need my wife by my side. And any man who's here who has, just kind of like what Don said, our idiosyncrasies, all of our faults, our wives continue to stand by our side. They're our cheerleader for life. And moms, we appreciate you for all that you do. And I know that you have your own families. But as a son and as your pastor, just know that I love you all very much so. And I do know that from time to time you get tired and you might have those moments where, like, Lord, where are you? Tell her to help me. Fix this. But just don't forget to integrate that good part. Because that seems to be the solution for Mary. That the stress levels, even though we saw the root cause of Martha was she was worried and troubled about many things, I think if moms, if you would get in a rhythm of making sure you get exposed to that good part regularly, I mean, amidst your busy schedule, you can use audio Bibles. You can, um, I'm not asking you to do something every single day but just enough to where you can hear his word from time to time, to be reminded that there is someone who loves you, that there is someone who cares for you and who will avail himself to you. And he says, I'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. But just don't worry. Be anxious for nothing. When you give it to God in prayer, with supplication, with petitions and thanksgiving, he promises a peace that surpasses all all understanding and once you're supplied with that peace then you can tackle the challenges that you currently are tackling but just don't do it on your own you need his involvement and when he's involved he'll see you through he's the miracle worker and he still does miracles today and he loves each and every one of you as well not just the moms but all of you so just remember, in closing, don't forget that good part because that seems to be the antidote to the stressors of life. That you saw two sisters, the focus on each of them was uniquely different. One was focused on just listening to Jesus, the other one was busy serving Jesus. So when you compare the two, the better part, according to Jesus Christ himself, was just the sister that sat at his feet listening to him. Why? Because that's where intimacy is developed. That's where the relationship is strengthened and nurtured. That's where you're pacified. That's when you get exposed to the reminders of his love for you. And that even though you might not be getting along with your family, your spouse, your kids, <clears throat> God is there for you. And sometimes we need to be reminded of that. And then as we latch on to him and trust him, we're going to see that all things work together for good because he loves us. So moms, please do not forget that good part. Continue to be the awesome mom that you are, but just don't forget that good part because we need it from time to time. That's what helps us keep our sanity. Okay? Okay? You're all hard workers. You're all phenomenal women. I mean, just giving birth to the kids, that alone is... You heard Glenn. Glenn had how many? 17? 14. And you're the reason why your mom's not here? You said you were the worst one? I doubt that. 
But women, happy Mother's Day, and I hope that uh, your family will spoil, to, spoil you today if, if they can, unless you've already been spoiled, because you deserve it. You, you certainly do deserve it. So, yeah. Sure. Shoulder surgery. Okay, yeah, that's for sure. Let's do that. Thank you for that reminder. So let's close in a word of prayer and then we'll partake in a little food. But before we do, Father, thank you as always for blessing us with all the special moms. Obviously, we have special moms here who are very dear to us and to their families. My prayer is that they would, like the word, uh, consult with you and look into the good part from time to time so that they could be reminded of how loved they are. And when they feel like giving up, they'll remember and recall that God is there by their side. And Father, we think of Charity right now, who is also a mother, but she is uh, recovering from surgery She's in recovery mode for her shoulder. And so we ask, Father, that you would intervene and expedite the healing and so that she could return to our fellowship as soon as possible. And we wish her a, a happy Mother's Day as well, along with her family. And of course, I think of Deacon Steve, who is not feeling well, which is why they're not here today. And so we lift him up in prayer as well and Deacon Morris and his family who, Deacon Morris just came back from work and he's jet lagged, so he's not able to join us today, but we'll be able to catch up with him later on today. And so Father, once again, we have these tremendous mothers um, who were standing in front earlier today. We truly are blessed. And the families that belong to their moms are extremely blessed as well. We heard why they were special. And we also heard some of the moms and their hearts and how they think of their families and what they wish for their own kids and family members. Pray now, Father, that you would be with us all as we uh, partake in food. We ask for your blessing upon, upon the food that we're about to partake in. Allow it to nourish our bodies and keep us all safe when we head home today, and if the moms are going to celebrate with their families, I pray that they have an awesome time, that they would really enjoy themselves and the families would just cherish them and let them know how much they are loved. This is their day, <clears throat> and they're deserving of the best. And we are grateful for our moms and for the moms here that stood before the church. We ask that you would keep them all safe and we ask all of this through Christ's precious name in which we pray, amen.